Hello, welcome to this video on improper integrals. This first video here is just the concept behind them, all the different ways that an integral can be improper. We're going to go over and then we'll review some, some background knowledge that you're going to need to make it through these integrals. Why would an integral be improper? Well, if the upper limit is infinity, for sure. <laughs> if the lower limit is negative infinity, for sure. But there's other ways that an integral can be improper. If your function has a discontinuity and either the upper limit is the place where the discontinuity is or the lower limit is the place where the discontinuity is or possibly some value in between the upper and lower limit is the place where the discontinuity is. If that's the case, then officially your integral is improper. Let's take a look at some examples. The integral from 1 to infinity of e to the negative 2x. x. Upper limit's infinity. We're going to do each of these integrals eventually, but I just want to um, show you an example of each different type. The integral from minus infinity to 1 of x e to the x. So improper because the lower limit is infinity, negative infinity. And we could definitely have integrals that are both, you know, there would be a mixture of these. Um, you can integrate from minus infinity to infinity. When we, when we get the probability coming up soon, all the integrals start out as minus infinity to infinity over the entire real line. Okay. All right, here's an example of a discontinuity. We have the cube root of 8 minus x in the denominator. So basically, from here on out, you now have to pay close attention to the denominator of your function to see possibly if it could be zero. When x equals 8, your denominator is zero. So therefore, 8 being the upper limit, this function will... Uh, 8 from which side? Yeah, this function will go off to infinity, positive infinity. Okay, but we're going to still see if we can figure out a way to find if it is an actual finite answer. Uh, lower limit, well, if you have um, 1 over x or 1 over root x and you're integrating with the lower limit of 0, for sure, 0 makes the denominator 0, so the lower limit is the issue, not the upper limit. And then these are the worst case scenario when you have an upper limit and a lower limit that don't make your integral function discontinuous but there's some place in between those two values that does. And so x equals 0. The function is discontinuous there. And minus 2 to 3, the interval that you're integrating over, encompasses that place where you actually are um, discontinuous at. So these are the ones that are sneaky because if you just integrate and you just plug in, you don't think about the discontinuity, you're going to get the problem wrong. Okay, how do we handle these? We have to introduce a limit. We can't plug in infinity. You can't treat infinity like a number, the way you treat a finite number. You can't plug it in. And so what you do with infinity, of course, going back to Calc 1, you have to take a limit as the variable approaches infinity. So you let a variable replace wherever your, wherever your um, infinite limit is, and then you let that variable approach that. Um, in the second one, we're going to let t approach negative infinity and replace the lower limit with a t. All right, now as a technicality on this third one here, you're going to approach 8, but you're only going to approach it from one side. You see, your interval is from 0 to 8. And so as you approach, um, as you approach 8, you'll be approaching from smaller numbers, so technically the limit is a, a left-hand limit. But you replace the t, you replace the 8 with the t and let t go to 8, one-sided though. You don't care what's going on, on the other side of 8. All right, um, from, from 0 to 9, you'll be approaching 0 from the, from the right-hand side. So technically those are one-sided limits there. Now when it comes to the infinite discontinuity being in between, you actually have to break it into two. You have to go from negative 2 to 0, then go from 0 to 3. 
and on the one you'll be approaching zero from the left on the other you'll be approaching zero from the right okay all right one last thing on this slide um, it could be that you have a finite area despite the fact that infinity is involved as a limit or there's a discontinuity it's very possible that the area under the curve is finite when that happens we say that the integral converges and we say we hopefully we can find what it converges to okay but it's possible that the integral might diverge and that means that this limit doesn't exist or this limit is infinite okay all right great uh you just gotta remember some tools that you have in your toolbox to help you find these limits okay so you got to go back to first semester calculus and you have to remember how to find limits at infinity all right and most of them are built off of the fact that if you have a constant that's over x raised to the r and x is going to infinity then that limit will be zero okay you got to be careful with the uh, the negative infinity, though, because, you know, you can't take the square root of a negative number. So any any root or any kind of a, uh, you got to be careful with the rational rational exponent there. But um, as long as it exists, then you can say, yeah, um, that limit also is zero as you go towards minus infinity. If you have a polynomial divided by another polynomial, if you have a rational function, then it's a matter of, the degree of the numerator versus the degree of the denominator. If they're equal to each other, then the limit is just a ratio of the leading coefficient. If the degree of the denominator is more than the degree of the numerator, or said the way it's written here, the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, automatically your limit is zero. It's when it's the other way around that you have to actually do some work. It could be infinity, it could be minus infinity, when the degree of the numerator is more than the degree of the denominator. But the limit does not exist. Okay? All right, great. On top of this skill, remembering how to find limits at infinity, I also need you to remember, of course, L'Hopital's rule. If you have a ratio of functions, and they're both headed to zero as x goes to a then that is an indeterminate form zero over zero is 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 an actual thing and so we have to call it an indeterminate form zero over zero could be one zero over zero could be zero zero over zero could be infinity zero over zero could be e okay and so um the other form that will get you to L'Hopital's rule will be infinity over infinity plus or minus. If they're both going to infinity or minus infinity, this is, these are indeterminate forms that L'Hopital's rule is built to handle. The way L'Hopital's rule works, hopefully you remember, is that you trade your limit in for a new limit. Okay, provided this new limit exists, where the new limit is the derivative of the numerator divided by the derivative of the denominator. Okay. All right, great. I think we can try to squeeze in one. Now let's wait till next video. So next video we'll do a bunch of limits um, involving infinity, and then the video after that we'll do a bunch of limits where um, you have some discontinuities. All right. Thank you for watching. My name is Nakai Rimmer. I'm here to help you through this journey. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. Um, and uh, yeah, like and subscribe. Comment down below. And I will uh, see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.